Not much to clap about. A tough day on Wall Street. All three major stock indices fell, especially in the afternoon on fears of a full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. The Dow down 400 plus, NASDAQ down 344, and the S&P down 79. Interest rates also went up. This all comes at a time when America is becoming increasingly unaffordable. Inflation is taking hold. Rent prices are rising. A report from the National Association of Realtors shows there are only 250,000 affordable homes on the market right now. Those are homes that are affordable to families with an annual income of the average American family between seventy-five dollars and $100,000. That's down from 650,000 homes before the pandemic first started. And that's not all. At least 500 cities have an average home price of a million dollars or more. An average price of a million dollars. Let's use Spokane, Washington as an example. It was considered one of the most affordable cities just five years ago. The typical home cost roughly $200,000. Now that number has more than doubled to 411,000. The housing market problems are starting to take hold everywhere. That's on top of the extreme rent inflation that has gone on. We bring in Jeff Tucker, senior economist from Zillow. Uh, at some point, the musical chairs has got to stop, right? Yeah, this is a really difficult housing market right now. Whether you're looking to go buy your first home or if you're renting a home right now, there are not many affordable options out there. And what we've seen during the pandemic was that people really researched and went to the places that were traditionally those kind of bastions of the American dream, places where you could go buy a family-sized home for an affordable price, places like North Carolina, Texas, Florida, as well as sort of the inland west, which includes places like Spokane. All those places have seen this flood of demand from folks seeking those bargains. And as people did that, the bargains have mostly dried up. Yeah, not to get too political about it, but Florida, Texas, you had open schools, you didn't have mask mandates, you had sort of a very different culture there than you do in the Northeast or in a place like um, Illinois. Why is the market so out of whack nationwide then? Yeah, nationwide, this is really the story of how the home building industry hung up their hammers, and stopped building homes in the wake of the 2007, 2008 housing crash. So we really underbuilt homes for at least 12 or 13 years there. And it came at a terrible time because we have this wave of demand coming from millennials. There are several million extra people right around age 30 to 35 right now. There was this kind of baby boom around 1990. That crop of several million extra people is entering their 30s now yeah. and they want to buy that first home. They're showing up in a housing market that wasn't ready for it, that hadn't well, built yeah, enough homes in anticipation. Those, tell me if I'm wrong, but a lot of those people were people who were living in high rises in downtowns and then all of a sudden started working from home on Zoom in their pajamas and thought, hey, isn't it going to be great to go move to Florida or North Carolina or Texas and get a house in the backyard and have more room for the dog? I'm wondering where, where this is headed. Uh, today, the home builders that you mentioned, their stocks just got shellacked. You've got rising interest rates. It, it, is there... Is there a way to pour cold water on the housing market without having a 2008 crash? I don't think a 2008 style crash is likely. You're absolutely right though that rising interest rates are going to create headwind for demand for housing this year. People getting a 30 year mortgage right now are already getting rates quoted above 4%. When people are getting, you know, two and a half or two and three quarters percent a little over a year ago. So that is absolutely eating into home buyers' budgets. But frankly, for a lot of home buyers, what that will mean is, okay, I'm gonna look for a more affordable home type in a more affordable neighborhood, or maybe move to a more affordable city entirely so that I can make it work. If, you, if you've got that second baby on the way, you don't fit in your apartment anymore, you're gonna find a way to make it work, even if you're paying a little bit more interest or if you have to kind of compromise on exactly which neighborhood you choose yeah, to buy that even, home in. Yeah, but as you point out, if there's even homes to buy just in terms of the amount of demand and the lack of supply. Pardon me. Um, the last question would be this. Is, is where, are we going to see a shift in sort of power dynamics? If you right now own 10 acres an hour and 15 minutes from Dallas, Texas, if you wait five or 10 years, that's going to be worth, it feels like, an awful lot of money. 
Absolutely. Any, anyone sitting on de buildable land right now is sitting on a gold mine. That the, the availability of buildable land is one of the key constraints holding back home builders. So we've seen developers really bidding up the price of buildable land, whether it's people building to sell those homes for owner occupants, or actually in a lot of cases, developers are now buying land and building specifically planning to rent out single family homes because they, they know there are so many folks out there who would be willing to pay top dollar to just get their foot in the door right now. Yeah, and they can and they can find all of it on Zillow. Rentals, sales, uh, it's all there. Hey, it was great to see you, Jeff. Uh, thanks for breaking this down. Thanks for uh, having me on. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.